Hello friends, welcome to Dysylvania, uh, our vampire English stream. I'm Yonuts, a beginner painter, and today I will host a, a painting workshop where we will show a few different techniques and have fun. Have fun! Yay! Yes! <laughs> we'll definitely have fun, so grab a beverage, um, grab a mini that's been sitting on the self, uh, shelf of shame for too long, Ooh. and uh, let's learn something together. Um, we are preparing a one shot with a surprise DM. Ooh. And uh, we have a few minis picked up, so um, all they need is a, some paint on them. And for that, I will need help. Um, first help would be in the form of Amazing Diana from uh, Rolling Hills Craft. Hello. Um, Diana hello, from Diana. Hello, hello. Uh, I'm Diana from Rolling Hills Craft. You might have seen some of my minis and terrains on some of the episodes that the Sylvania had in the past. I'm excited about this mini and I just broke the stuff of the mini. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no, accidents happen just before oh, yes. starting the stream, but that's fine because everything is fixable, right? Oh yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I think the first technique that we're gonna show is actually how to how, how to, to fix <laughs> this. <laughs> how to so that being remedy. said, before I break anything, I'm gonna let Alexander do his. <laughs> if you want us to show more of that, I have plenty of um, uh, material we can work with. <laughs> <laughs> if you breaking stuff. I have something to show you. <laughs> is that your pile of shame? Is that broken minis? Uh, no, no. It's uh, it's uh, too um, it's too much of a tragedy to show it on camera. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, you see. But I will talk about that. <laughs> Definitely. And also, we have here um, Great Alexander, who is not Alexander the Great, but he is great. Thank you. So, uh, Alexander, simple. <laughs> uh, you know me as uh, Roll for Initiative folks on Instagram. You've also seen some, a few of my things uh, painted uh, for Dysylvania, like some minis from the Valentine session. And uh, I know secrets about this uh, one shot Ooh. with a mystery DM. Mm. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I think today we're gonna be painting uh, once fixed <laughs> uh, some uh, characters from these. Uh, maybe characters, maybe not. Who knows? <laughs> the ones that no spoilers do. Well, um, maybe if you want spoilers, maybe you can watch uh, Roll for Initiative Fox Instagram and see if he will divulge anything. And uh, also, uh, if you're still there, don't forget to also like uh, uh, Rolling Hills Instagram, Rolling Hills Craft Instagram. Yes. And also and mysterious voices from the behind, uh, from uh, maybe from the Dysylvania cast, maybe for not the Dysylvania cast. Maybe I'm Karina. Maybe I'm Carla. Maybe I'm Ler. I can even make my make my voice sound like Ler. Check it out. <laughs> oh, you know that Diana knows the spoiler for the one shot, right? She does. She, she does? I think so. Ooh, maybe oh. I do. She's just playing nice, you guys. Spoilerception. <laughs> and since we're here, don't forget also to like our Instagram, follow us on uh, Discord, Twitch, YouTube. We're everywhere, even TikTok. So you know, you know, guys, uh, just uh, see whatever medium fits you. Uh, so, what are we painting today? Well, I'm going to be painting this little lady that, uh, you know, let me how focus. Okay, and she has a staff. It was much more imposing before I broke it. Um, so, it's first okay. I'm gonna fix and then I'm gonna paint. Um, it's okay, you, you can blame me. I mean, it was <laughs> on camera. I cannot blame you on oh. this one. Oh. <laughs> I see. I thought it's it was the other one that I broke. No, no, it, <laughs> it, was, it was the. One. <laughs> we wow. have another one on, off camera. No, it's it's actually this is on me, um, and I actually broke it. Right. Well, I was doing my intro, so. 
<laughs> One thing I did notice um, when um, I had like a very slim uh, bow and arrow at some point and I uh, glued it several times and the glue was harder than the resin so uh, that was okay. Basically make, <laughs> take two minis out of glue. Yeah. <laughs> Not resin. <laughs> what are you painting? I will play, pay, paint a gif. A gif? Yep. Um, uh, he's a crafty gif. A crafty gif. Mm. Mm. Happy hippo crafty gif. <laughs> happy hippo. <laughs> he is a happy hippo, yeah. I think. You can see he has a very uh, wide smile. Oh, I thought he was just hungry. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. yeah. So, uh, what did you? Yeah, get? so I have. It's not broken yet. I feel now like <laughs> there is a lot of pressure yeah, on you, man. You're of, the I... only one with unbroken knee <laughs> at this point. <laughs> I'll try to keep it this way. Uh, so I have a mini that is inspired by Harley Quinn. And I also have uh, a reference photo of Harley Quinn, but I will try to give it a twist, so it's not uh, like directly taken a Harley Quinn, just painted like this. Still That's unbroken. That's exciting. <laughs> Still unbroken. <laughs> Unbent, unbroken. Can we can we have like a timer, like a bomb timer that's gonna count <laughs> until you actually break it? Let's add it. To it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, even if you don't break it, there's still time until uh, we actually get to use it in the one shot. Or um, as um, it might have happened during an episode, during the one shot or the ah. episode. Oh. Yes, no. <laughs> oh, oh, you know. right before the one shot, says the voice behind the screen. <laughs> <laughs> so we're very curious, uh, Alexander. We have a question from the audience, uh, the audience being ourselves. Um, how? What's your secret? Tell us your secrets, your ways. How do you not break up? <laughs> All your secrets, please. Uh, regarding painting, the other secret. Ah, uh, okay. okay. Uh, I mean, I'm so, curious uh, about uh, the not breaking the, the, the one shot. Uh, after breaking a lot of minis, because I've been painting for uh, quite a few years, uh, and uh, almost 20, yes. Almost 20. Wow. Uh, yeah. yeah. I've, the first time I picked up a brush, I think I was five. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. That's impressive. Where my dad literally just gave me the three basic colors, uh, blue, yellow, and red. Uh, a brush that was uh, like very flat and uh, used, and then he was like, "Okay, do what uh, you, you want. Do your yeah, thing. yeah, you do your thing." Uh, he was painting uh, next to me, and uh, I was just, you know, spla slapping color. You still have that many? Uh, I think it's still somewhere in our house in Greece. Wow, that's yeah. amazing! Yeah. <laughs> if you take the time to really scroll to my Instagram, I have another miniature that I painted. It's like a paladin with a sword and shield. <laughs> okay. And it's just gold. <laughs> I just painted the entire <laughs> thing gold. <laughs> but it's very paladin though. Yeah. I mean... Yeah. It's a panagold. <laughs> panagold. But yeah, I think today... <laughs> Uh, we will paint more than just gold in an entire mini. Hopefully. Hopefully. Would be nice. Yeah, so... <laughs> some colors. We have a few colors in front of us and by looking at our minis I think we will all have very diverse uh, color schemes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't think we're gonna have something similar. I mean the minis in themselves aren't really that similar anyway. We have a very, um, you know, delicate elf lady. We have a hippo. Um, and another delicate lady? She's not that delicate though. Yeah. She can pack a punch, I suppose. <laughs> oh, definitely. She has a whip. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Whip, whip. Whip, whip. So, before uh, we get uh, a jump into the juicy part of the episode, uh, tell us a little bit of an overview. What techniques were we uh, will be using today? And we'll see on camera with you guys. My technique would be just uh, look left, <laughs> look right, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, try to get. Okay, so uh, I suppose I love um, uh, glazing, but it takes an awful lot of time, and I'm a very slow painter, like very very slow. 
Um, <laughs> you went so fast. Oh no, if we, we go in terms of speed, Diana is yeah? smoking guns uh, <laughs> next to me. <laughs> well, it's all in the rest. It's all rest. <laughs> in the rest. <laughs> uh, in terms of techniques, for me, I think it's I'm going to be doing... Um, and I think we're all going to be doing kind of a layering technique where we put layers on top of layers of acrylic paint. Um, what I'm probably going to be doing a bit special is doing a bit of wet blending here on this flame. And a bit of dry brushing here on her skirt. I don't know if the camera captures it. There's quite a lot of details on her skirt. So I'm going to try to do something like that. Um, and I don't know, something on the staff if it's still attached <laughs> <laughs> by the end of this. <laughs> if um, not, it would be an interesting pose, like it would be a, a backhand swing. Is this a weapon, actually? Well, Can you, this be a weapon? You know, it could a be a cane. Okay. A cane. Oh, a cane. A walking cane. Yeah. I mean, she's seriously though. <laughs> could it? I, mean, could it? So, I will let the people decide. Could this be a cane? Um, she, she doesn't look old. Um, it's, a it was, yeah, it's, it's a fashion cane. It's a fashion choice. Mm -hmm. It's a fashion choice. Then I'll, you know what? I'm just let's let's roll with this. Let's let's make this a fashion cane. Yes, I'm, I'm gonna oh, do that. Also, she's an elf, so she may be three thousand years old. So <laughs> she may. So, need the cane. Also, she's right, she's an elf and she has magic, so maybe she has magicked herself to be uh -huh. this young, beautiful But lady. not arthritis. Oh, arthritis not doesn't enough. go with magic. Yeah, so, but you know what it could be? Hmm? Alabaster skin and everything uh, magically renewed, but she took an arrow to the knee. I'm gonna take this and glue it to the knee. <laughs> <laughs> so just like this. I actually have a bow and arrow with me here somewhere, so we can take the arrow. But it doesn't match the outfit. Oh, that's it. It's like, you know, old age or not, outfit needs to be on point, I'm sorry. <laughs> so yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to work with this and see if I can make it work. If not, I'll attach the stuff. <laughs> yeah. uh, I will also try to go for a mix of uh, layering and, and glazing because glazing takes a, a lot of practice that uh, so far we still haven't mastered to go on a full glazing mode but we are somewhere in between layering and glazing so we're gonna use a mishmash of uh, techniques pretty much okay. how uh, it's comfortable for us to paint and also what we showcased at uh, the miniature painting workshop we hosted uh, earlier mm -hmm. uh, in Bucharest and I think I would start with how to hold the brush because that was something that uh, we kind of skipped we went through the, the parts of the brush but not how to hold it and then how to set the paint uh, on the palette and how to dilute it. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good start because yeah. we, I think we were too excited to start actually painting. Yes. Uh, and it's always good to have a bit of turn, return to the basics just yeah. so we know how we, how we start. Yeah. So. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, for me personally, because I'm a left-handed uh, person, I usually go for a very relaxed uh, hold on the brush that uh, it's very similar to how I'm holding a pencil. I've seen other people holding it like this to go to go further in or just in a, a various different ways that as I see it, they would seem awkward, but you know, if you're comfortable and uh, it gives you enough brush control, you can hold uh, the brush with your nose if you if you want. That can be some a yeah. new technique. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, yes. I just realized I'm holding my brush way towards the tip, like this. Yeah. I'm basically holding the what's this called? Uh, this is the ferrule. Ferrule. The, the metallic part that uh, connects the brush handle to the brush tip. This metallic part is called the ferrule, if I pronounce it well. Yeah, sound, sounds yeah. correct. We should Google this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> ferrule. Ferrule. Uh, 
guys, if you have a comment on that, you can leave it on YouTube or on Twitch. If you think it's fair or you think it's uh, fair all in a different way, ferule. Ferule or ferule. something else, so please leave a comment. We would love that. Yeah. We would love to find out. Yeah. You know what I'm curious? Do you find that your brush is too short? Um, this one, I think, is one of the shortest I have. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> Are you comparing brushes? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we we'll see who yeah. has the longest. It's is is this an ego thing? No. It's always an ego thing. It, it's um, it's actually the tip that counts. Uh, uh, so the <laughs> that is one thing. On the other hand, I've uh, tried brushes that uh, the handle is extremely long. I don't like those. I, I find them uncomfortable. Yes, yeah. and uh, on my home setup, I have an arch lamp. <laughs> that when I tried to paint, the back end of the handle would would not allow me to go to some specific With angles. Brush? With this brush? No, no, this, this one. This one uh, for me is the perfect oh, okay. size. Okay. Uh, because it gives you enough, uh, let's say, balance mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in order to move it around and go at any direction that you want. Before you ask me, I never considered if this is too short or not. I, I was just... You know why I was asking? Because can you hold the brush normally as you yeah. do? I feel like if you... If you uh, like if you move your brush a yeah. bit ahead... It might then slip. It slips and then it, it, like it kind of stabs you here on your hand. Oh, that would definitely be uncomfortable. And it, yeah, rather I, than be, it being stable here on yeah. this point. I, I guess uh, here it helps that I help, uh, that I hold my brush uh, more towards the tip, so there's a bit more left. Mm. Um, and um, it never bothered me the size. Um, but for example, um, uh, what really uh, I do remember that it um, helped me paint really good, or at least it helped me in the beginning. This one, and um, I simply loved it. I mean, yeah. if it works for you, then just yeah. go with it. Yeah. So, and yeah, in general, the closer to you, you are to the contact with the, the mini and the brush tip, in theory, the more control you have, while when you're further away, smaller movements can cover uh, more ground. Mm. Yeah. So, if you want to uh, paint something that you don't want to go very precise, you can go even a bit further away and with less effort and movement of your hands. I just remembered that uh, during the workshop uh, at some point I was quite a bit behind and I had to cover a lot of it and yeah I just uh, did like this. <laughs> so, you're, so you weren't sitting like this very close to the... Not when I was bristles. rushing. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> See it was a natural thing you just... Yeah. You just knew exactly. what to do. Biomechanics are fun. <laughs> All right, so okay. sir, shall so, we start? Yeah, yeah let's slapping? talk about paint. We yeah. can spend one more hour talking about yeah, brushes. Let's definitely. actually paint something. <laughs> so, a key ingredient into the painting and diluting the paint is uh, keeping it uh, humid. So you need to have... Uh, keep, keep what humid? The paint. The paint oh, and no. the palette. I said paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah good. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget your basics. <laughs> Grammar. Uh, all right. Uh, so uh, for uh, this uh, nice lady, she has a lot of cloth and uh, barely any skin. So I will start uh, with a cloth, and uh, I will go with uh, red half first. And I'm gonna use a very favorite red of mine, which is called Evil Red. Evil oh. Red. So we are using uh, water-based acrylic paints uh, for miniature painting and we have our own uh, wet palettes. Mm -hmm. What is a wet palette? So a wet palette is uh, a palette that is wet. Ooh. <laughs> uh, <the> Tell <laughs> me more! <laughs> <laughs> now, the, the big difference between a dry palette and a wet, beside the wetness, is the fact that for the dry palette you just have uh, a palette paper mm -hmm. and uh, that is it. Well, for the wet palette, underneath the uh, paint paper, you have a medium like a sponge or uh, like uh, paper towels, depending if you make it on your own or you get a, a, a already made one. 
that it keeps uh, the humidity and there is a layer of uh, moisture. Let's, yeah, moisture on the paper that keeps the, the paint wet for longer time. Mm -hmm. This way it's also helping you dilute the paint and keep it uh, on your palette for longer times. It's uh, summer in Bucharest when it's 40 degrees and uh, you don't have an air condition you definitely need the wet palette otherwise the paint will dry within a few minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's almost instant it feels like you just take a few brushes and then it's Mm. So yeah, with a wet palette, it helps us uh, keep the paint diluted, so it's uh, thinner and uh, runs smoother on the mini. And at the same time, we don't have to worry that oh, if I leave it a few seconds longer, the paint will be gone. Because once the paint dries, but dries well, yeah. there's no going back. Yeah. Some paints can get reactivated, but acrylics don't. Yeah. And um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, uh, we are actually need a wet palette because uh, acrylics dry very fast and it's one of their benefits. Um, you can paint, you can, uh, uh, for example, as we said, we'll you use multiple layers and uh, we need the previous layer to be dry by the time we try to do it again. See, you know, yep. pay attention exactly. to our workshop. Exactly. <laughs> Because it's uh, exactly what we covered. Perfect. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is actually a check for Yunus to make sure that he was paying attention in the workshop. But <laughs> oh no, is this a <laughs> test? <laughs> <laughs> it is actually gonna be a test. Ooh, we have quizzes. Yeah. <laughs> it's recorded. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so first thing first, we really have to shake well our paint bottles. Why They're, do we need to do that? Uh, so for the pigment of the paint, so the pigment is what uh, gives the color to the liquid that's in the bottle. And then there is a dilutant, there is a medium inside the bottle that mixed with the pigment gives you the paint. So sometimes, because uh, the paint bottle set, sits still on your shelf for some time, or we can showcase it on this one. Oh, mm. yeah. So that's yeah, here here you can see that there is a, li a yellowish liquidy thing inside but the color should be green now this is actually where the medium has separated uh, from the pigment and now if we shake this well and I really hope it works <laughs> <laughs> if, if not we got some metal yeah. balls ah, here. It's, also a, uh, it's also a technical paint so it's, it's not supposed to mix that well but okay it's not so visible in person so on camera mm. i think it's even worse <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it is uh, mixed uh, better even if you don't see um any changes any layers in um, how they are separated it's good to mix it because um, otherwise it won't uh, cover well exactly yeah so let's oh. go um it would be nice if we had some not Macarena, but like, uh, you know... It's unavoidable. Maybe, unavoidable, yeah. some shaky shaky music. Uh, sometimes you can, um, to make it easier for you, either you can use... Uh, uh, there are some mixing... Mixing uh, things, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or you can just uh, uh, add some um, small metal um, uh, spheres. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, make sure you get the right mixing spheres, because uh, <laughs> otherwise they can corrode and uh, the paints really have a lot of chemicals that can uh, uh, do that to um, metals and it will ruin your paint, basically. And you don't yeah. want that. No. Okay, so we have our paint on the palettes. Um, what now? So, I've already applied my uh, paint and uh, let me see if I can capture it a bit here. As you can see, it's quite well diluted already, but I want it a bit more. So I'm gonna wipe the brush a bit in the water. I'm gonna remove the excess in the cup and then a bit on the paper towel because I don't want it to be extremely watery. And now I'm gonna add the water here. And as you can see, it appears like it flows better so the consistency that we want is like skimmed milk 
Exactly. Mm -hmm. So just very watered type of, yeah. of milk. Yeah, because as a rule of thumb, it's better that you pass the mini twice with the paint than passing it once and it clumps up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yes. Okay, so uh, for example, I took a big blob of uh, paint. Uh, do I fill it all at once or just a bit uh, of what I need? Uh, you can do it all at once to have the consistency you need or you can just uh, uh, dilute a part of it and you're playing on this part and then you see, okay, I need more paint, so I'm adding from the blob of paint into the diluted area, I see how it reacts with what is already there, and then if I need, I add more water. Mm -hmm. Personally, that's the method that I choose to do, rather than mixing my entire paint. Because um, for some reason, if the paint dries, then it's easier for me to pick it up from the original blob than from the one that I already have mixed. I so I think it's one of those where you need to paint and yeah. see what works for you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we have a good consistency now. Yeah. And uh, now, because this is the first uh, layer of paint that uh, I'm going to do, I'm going to use a bigger brush mm -hmm. because I'm not really interested to make detailed uh, lines, but I need to cover a larger area. What are you painting first? Uh, skin? Uh, I will or... not go for skin because she only has a bit of face, some fingers and uh, one thigh. Mm. So I want to cover the red part first, which is half of the mini. Okay. So I'm gonna go for that. Okay. We were discussing with Diana that we have very different uh, beginning approach, approach on the yeah. mini. She starts with the face because it's the focal point of uh, the miniature. Mm -hmm. And uh, depending on the amount of uh, skin that there is on the mini, I will start either with uh, skin and face or I will start with uh, something else. So in this case, it is uh, something else. Mm. Yeah, I choose to do that because I feel like that's where, when you pick up a mini, that's where you first look at yeah. the face. So I try to be, you know, to give as much attention to the face as possible. And I hope that the camera can capture it. Um, I'm trying to be, uh, you know, to cover the entire surface of the face, but not necessarily, you know, painting a uh, or giving any mind to the fact that I'm covering other areas, like she has a helmet on her on her head, and I'm okay with covering that um, as long as the face gets a full layer of, of paint. Uh, my 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 little old lady with magic has a lot more skin showing, so I'm starting with the skin, um, and then I'm gonna move on to the clothes and some of the armor that she has on her. What are you starting with, Yonut? Uh, I think I will start with the coat. It uh, oh. gives me a sense of, uh, look how much I've painted them. <laughs> <laughs> it is quite a big area. And it helps, I think, once you have that large area of the mini covered, that you know what are the other colors that you're going to put on the mini. Right? Exactly, because um, I know that it's um, advisable to uh, know the color scheme beforehand and to have a, a, the better of an idea that you have to what you're going to paint, um, it will get easier for you. But sometimes you just don't really know mm -hmm. and um, you can just decide um, while you do it. And yeah, that, that helps me sometimes, though I try to avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you try to have to always have a color scheme on your mind before you start? I try. Mm. And how do you decide the color scheme? Um, I try to get um, colors that uh, mix well together uh, through color theory mm -hmm. and then try to have uh, so I decide on um, two three main um, base color uh, paint colors mm -hmm. and then uh, I try to uh, decide uh, sometimes you need some details of a different color for example if you have some brass you can't um, uh, avoid it mm -hmm. you have to add it and um, I have to think 
Okay, I'm putting the grass here. It's just a few uh, very small areas. But uh, I'll also have some other details and I'll try to match those details at least. The colors of those details or something. Um, I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> So question, we know when Alexander started painting. How about you guys? When was the first time you started painting? Mm, started painting miniatures? Because Not <laughs> really. Uh, I started... When did this passion begin? Let's put it like this. Well, for me it was always a matter of I know I wanted to create things. So it was more in the sense that I know I want to paint or I want to craft or I want to do something in the artistic uh, area. Um, I discovered miniature painting actually by chance. Um, I initially started with uh, terrain crafting. That was my first introduction into the, into the hobby. Uh, and I think I still have a screenshot of one of my friends um, that still sends me those th that screenshot when I said uh, I'm never gonna start miniature painting. It's so boring. They're just spending hours and hours and painting a face. I, I there's a screenshot of that. I'm gonna try to find it. I need this. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you know, at, at at some point it's like I can do that, and I was almost immediately hooked. Um, but I started painting really early in my life, like. I don't know, I was five or something like that. And not necessarily miniature painting, but painting in general. Um, so it, it's, it's always been one of those really big uh, parts of who I, who I was and still am. <laughs> and what about you? I think about a year ago I first uh, painted. Um, so... Um, I have this friend. I have you have that friend. <laughs> <laughs> I know a guy, <laughs> and um, he really loves the um, uh, miniatures. Um, and uh, yeah, he really loves them <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so one time um, he was going to purchase some minis uh, at the shop, and um, I wanted to come with him. And um, I, I already had I had already started playing D and D, um, but I don't think I ever had a mini before. So um, I purchased them uh, unpainted, and um, I wanted to paint them. I wanted to look good. So um, we had this mini campaign that um, for which I needed a uh, druid. And I just so happened to have purchased something like uh, a druid. So um, I spent like 45 hours painting it. You still have it? Yeah. Ooh, nice. <laughs> and um, I haven't painted much uh, since, uh, but um, uh, that's why I still consider myself a beginner. Uh, and I am a beginner, <laughs> it's not just that I'm considering myself. And uh, yeah, I'll um, look left and right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, what I want to showcase uh, uh, when we're discussing about having a thinned uh, paint is that if you see that on her hat, I've done only one uh, layer, and you can see that in some areas the you see the color is uh, changing a bit because uh, thank you Diana as well we had the zenithal highlight on uh, the minis so a zenithal highlight is when we prime the minis dark gray uh, black and then from above we spray uh, white so zenithal is the, the light is coming from above and this helps us uh, see better uh, the, some details and where we should try to focus uh, the light. Now in this uh, case, because on the hat it's the top on part is almost entirely white. So with the thin down paint you already see that in some areas the color is darker 
while in uh, some others it is uh, lighter. This is the result of having a diluted uh, paint. Now I can go over if I want to have this color everywhere or just go on with a dilute paint with the, the next colors in order to have uh, the highlights. Now, I don't know about you, I've covered most of the red parts. Now, I'm not sure how it shows on the camera, but this is more li of like a purple red, which is great because purple works very well as a shadow for the red. So where the light is not going, it's gonna be this uh, darker, colder uh, hue. I also prefer to uh, get my colors a bit darker at, at first and then lighten them up as uh, I go. Um, also the priming I try to do it as uh, uh, dark as possible. Except when you really need to use a white one for example. Um, when do you need to use a white uh, primer? Uh, the primer in general uh, helps uh, to bring out the colors that will go over. So if you have a dark primer, it will help you keep your uh, following colors on a, let's say, lower tone. It will bring the colors a bit down. While uh, the white will uh, keep the colors uh, brighter. So. In the long uh, run, you could consider using a white primer or a darker primer. Personally, I like the darker because there are some areas in the miniature that you cannot really get with uh, the paints afterwards. And if you have a white primer, you have to try and squeeze the, the brush, you know, through. Yeah. I also um, have a tendency to uh, really uh, look at the details and try to get them right and at some point uh, enough is enough. <laughs> so um, you can see it, You uh, so, so I guess it's, it doesn't matter that it's uh, not painted uh, or not perfect or just a layer of coat or two layers and that's it. Um, like. For example, here I have some uh, um, areas that I will just not paint. The one behind, I, I'm not even sure they can see. So uh, yeah, underneath the coat, the, in the shadows, uh, I will not. Paint I'm not those. sure we can see either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. Uh, yeah, like uh, the inside back of the coat. Uh, yeah. But you know that it's not painted and that matters. Yeah, you're gonna feel guilty every time you put a mini on the table. No, I will look and see... Thank I saved myself so exactly. much trouble. I love it. That and is... it's supposed to be dark anyway. It's shadow. Yeah. It's a big shadow. I mean, in the end, there are so many places that the light will actually reach. Yeah. So... And I think the standard is to kind of simulate the light and the shadows that the sunlight at its zenith, which is at 12, 1 p.m. p.m. Okay, I always get those confused. Uh, that's why it's called a, a zenithal light, a um, zenithal prime, because it kind of simulates that light that comes from over the top and it doesn't leave very harsh shadows. Um, on your on your miniature there are some situations where you would want that but that's a very kind of complicated and a bit more advanced technique uh, for just having a mini on the table uh, zenithal prime is good enough to have to have on the table um, I kind of finished my my skin tone <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't have a lot of skin. Like she has skin, but it's not. You that... just told us she has so much skin. <laughs> she has she more did. skin. She, she has more skin than your lady. Okay. Oi. 
so I'm gonna move to to highlights mm -hmm. uh, where like my base color for example was this dark um, orangey brown uh, not dark dark orange mixed with a bit of brown and I'm gonna mix it a bit with a color um, with a skin color um, just to kind of have a nice blend between uh, the two. Do you like to use this one as well? I have it on this side. Uh, I will no, because you know I'm no. gonna I'm gonna use a pale sand. Okay. Um, the one that Alexander just uh, asked me about has a bit of a green tint in it. Yeah. Uh, it's really nice for like undead skin tone, uh, but she's not undead. Yeah. No, 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 this is the She's just old. Uh, this is the elfic flesh. Yeah, 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 but it's like, I, I, it's not necessarily the skin tone that I uh, want. Really? It, this is very similar, like if you would put them together like this, they are very, very similar. No, no please. No, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm move very carefully so I don't break another thing. Uh, the cane will be as a remote. Oh, good God. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can paint it and then you can um, um, glue any weapon. Yeah, true, true. She's a versatile lady. Uh, right. Magic. Um, <laughs> so as Alexander was saying, I tend to start with my, my uh, skin and face. So now I'm gonna add highlights to the top of her face, so where the light would naturally live, um, uh, would naturally hit the face. So uh, that's on top of the forehead, tip of the nose, uh, top of the cheekbones, and then on the on the on the chin. Yeah, I know this is Alexander's spiel, so I stole it this time. <laughs> he does it better though. He does it better. <laughs> I think there is a photo from the first workshop yeah, yeah, I delivered yeah. of uh, you being there and just snapped a photo of me that I, I, I'm like this. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so it's just a, a, a lighter color of skin that I'm gonna apply um, to the face of the mini. Uh, now this lady, she doesn't have a lot of armor on her stomach where her vital organs are. <laughs> Uh, but she has a helmet, so I'm not going to be able to do her forehead, uh, but I'm going to be able to do the tip of her nose, uh, top of her cheeks. And, and belly button. It, of course. She works out, man. Well, that's where mage armor comes in. That's why she protects her head to, for, you know, to stay concentrated on the mage armor. Okay. It's concentrated on the belly button. <laughs> that's where you, that's where you keep all your mage powers in your belly button. Yes. <laughs> uh, now I finished also the base uh, part of uh, the red, so I'm gonna add a brighter red to my existing red to start building on the highlights. Do you want to try this this red, or do you have already? Oh no, your red is redder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got the red red. <laughs> yeah, your red is redder. Uh, I, yeah, I add a bit on the palette and I'll start mixing the two units. Yes. I see your uh, coat is almost, uh, has color almost everywhere. So, um... <laughs> now, granted, she has a larger mini. Yeah, it's... And, uh, like... <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, it's like, look at this. I mean, you can't compare. The, <laughs> Just the, the coat of the hippo is like our entire mini, so granted. You know, the almost funny thing about it is that if you were to ask me how many uh, layers did I do on my coat, I can't tell you because it varies based on where, okay. I, where uh, you ask me about. Um, because um, I think I thinned my paint uh, a bit too much and okay. it was a bit harder to stick. So um, it wasn't a uh, uniform cover, it was wavy. But you can mm. use that to your advantage though. Uh, On yeah. subsequent layers and uh, other uh, next colors, okay. like you can actually give this as a pattern on the oh. coat. Uh, what I try to do instead is correct it. And uh, where it um, was uh, covered uh, less, mm -hmm. I just went yeah. in and he just Th This part. is if you but want to stick to the color that you want to do. Okay. 
but yeah, if you want to have, it's a space hippo. True. And uh, also, don't drink the paint water like I almost <laughs> did. That's what I, I've signaled them. So this is paint. This is drink. <laughs> it helps. Also, talking about minutes, which is better to paint a small one or a big one? Define small, <coughs> define big. Uh, <laughs> Timmy from Christmas Adventure and uh, I don't know Tiamat. And uh, better how? Like <laughs> like easier, easier, easier. Not that many I don't know layers or attention to detail needed. Well, I think um, I, I will give my um, amateur answer first, and then uh, the pros can do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, in my experience, it, it, it's a bit satisfying to have um, uh, something bigger to paint. Um, you won't use uh, these fine techniques, you'll just uh, put some color in there and you can do that quite fast um, and use a lot of dry brushing even. Um, so you can make it easier. Um, I don't know if I can paint a small mini in a, in a small window of time. It's... I have to focus on these details. <laughs> that's by your choice. Yes. <laughs> that's self-induced trauma that happens there. It's not because... Oh, it's a trauma then. <laughs> Makes sense. Eyes are hard. I avoid the eyes. I don't... At some point I have to do them and... Uh, I don't know what happens there. It's blank. <laughs> I will let Diana give her uh, version because you mentioned the mini from the Christmas one shot that I guess Diana painted. Uh, that was an no, example. No, actually, yeah. actually, I Lair painted, painted that one. That's it, why it looks so majestic. It turned out really yeah, nice. Yeah, I know. I, know, I don't I know. know why he's complaining. It actually turned out really nice. Ah, Carla painted it <laughs> with my Lair voice. Uh, <laughs> yes. I did it. I'm Carla. <laughs> 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 so let's say uh, small it's steamy, medium it's what you guys paint and large is anything from a troll to Tiamat. Mm -hmm. I think it very much depends on what you want to do with the mini and it very much depends on the model uh, because a troll has a lot of skin tone, it has a lot of um, I don't know details that can be sculpted into the into the mini. Also, bigger minis are usually bosses, so you kind of want to have them a bit impressive on the table. So I think I sp usually I spend the same amount of time on a boss mini than on a hero mini, just because I feel like they should have the same importance. Um, but it depends a lot on how it's sculpted. If it's like, for example, um, as as uh, Yonut said, it's a miniature that uh, can be painted fast and with nice results with dry brushing, which is a technique that covers a lot of uh, area quite fast, um, then I'm happy to do that and then take my time with bringing in more accents. So it very much depends on the miniature that, on, and on the model. Uh, what, about, uh, what about you, Alexander? Off. <laughs> <laughs> Big cut. <laughs> Uh, so what uh, Diana said is uh, true. Uh, in uh, the TLDR is I agree with Diana. <laughs> uh, I've painted uh, also for uh, competitions. So I painted the uh, busts, where the bust is a smaller area of the mini because it's usually from uh, the chest up. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, it's quite large. So yeah, having a like large them. area, that means that you have a lot more uh, surface to blend and make it look more lifelike. While for this, in some areas, if it's very small, you can do two lines and it uh, and goes well. But on a bust or uh, the purple dragon that is uh, displayed and we had that also at Comic-Con, that uh, you need to pay attention to some specific details. Mm. Like you can uh, escape with uh, some things on the bigger uh, mini, like you mentioned the uh, dry brushing and some uh, 
larger areas to, to save time. On the other hand, there are some areas that you have to be careful. Like on the purple dragon that we had for the battleground uh, in the arena, for the wing membrane, I spent more time on the wings and the bones on the wings mm. than I did for uh, the purple that was the majority of the dragon. And that's just because it was sculpted, like it had a lot yeah. of bones details. Yes. Um, maybe we can find a picture of it and just kind of oh, post yes, it. Oh yes, definitely. Um, I wanted to ask something. Okay. <laughs> um, also, I, what I kind of wanted to mention is that on a bigger mini, even if the surface is I mean, because the surface is bigger, any mistake that you make is gonna be bigger. Because yep. uh, it, it is what it is. Um, on a smaller mini, maybe you can cover the mistake with something else. You can just drop a layer of paint or something like that. Uh, but on a bigger mini, once you kind of decided on a color scheme and then you, just, you realize that it doesn't work, well, then you kind of need to redo the entire thing. <laughs> or on a small mini, if your eyesight is not good enough and you have to make does. the mouth, you'll do it mm -hmm. uh, down. I, th that can also happen, like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> that can also happen. And sometimes you just need to take the decision to leave it alone. <laughs> yeah, you definitely need to decide like, man, this is it. I'm going to stop now. Uh, and, <laughs> you know, time to take a break. Time to just leave the things be and get back to it at, when, at a later time. <laughs> it is very important to take breaks first uh, for the eyes, uh, then for your hands. And then and for your back. back. Because we have oh, altered, yeah. like we all started in a good yeah, position, but, but then, then we all kind of slowly <laughs> hunched into shrimp position. <laughs> yeah, so uh, speaking of, of our painting position, um, it's also good to sit up from time to time. We, we've mm -hmm. been sitting and it's recommended once every hour or so mm -hmm. to sit up. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to take a small break and um, uh, stretch a bit, then we'll come back and uh, paint some more of this coat. <laughs> more, of the, more of the same coat. More of the coat, yeah. So, uh, break time? Yeah, yeah, break time. Stretch time. See you in a bit. <laughs> I can eat Tara. You're a weirdo.
Hello, welcome back! Yeah! We're, we're stretched. Yes. Stretched. We're good. We're good. Ready to start again. Um, no minis were broken. <laughs> Important almost. to say. Almost. <laughs> At some point, the end, I want to see how I'm uh, how I'm going with my mini. Okay. It was okay. fast along, <laughs> very gently, with two hands, yeah. just to keep it safe. Um, it happens. It happens a lot. <laughs> More than you know. So, what do we do now? What's what's the current status? So, I'm for me, I'm going a bit slow with. Um, uh, the base coats and um, I think I'll just just for fun I, I love working on the details so I'll do some details okay like hmm? what I'm um, thinking maybe the mouth and the teeth the teeth yes nice uh -huh. nice okay so um, now that I look at it it will still be some of the cars that I used here and they were uh, not, uh, uh, blood god and uh, emperor's children. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's the, the, yeah the, the blood god is like a technical thing that gives a lot of glossy red. It really looks like blood. Okay. blood. And the pink, uh, the emperor's children is like a very bright pink. So you want to go for the details on the cloak with the pink? Uh, yes. The, oh, okay, yeah. So I think sounds good. I think I'll do um, uh, oh not right now but eventually. Ah, okay. uh, now I'll do uh, the inner mouth and um, I'll do some uh, blood guard, blood guard, yes. Yeah. Okay, and um, then just um, um, diluted with some pink or brown. I'll see what mm -hmm. I can come up with, and then the tips which um, for which I'll need to borrow some paints from you. Some yeah. paints. It sounds good. Uh, on, uh, I think this is a good one for you. On my yes. red, I started uh, mixing, so from the evil red to a more uh, red red. Mm. So I'm easily mixing uh, the colors between them, so there's a, a smoother transition. And I keep it uh, as uh, moist mm -hmm. as uh, possible. Uh, and I'm gonna continue just a bit with the skin uh, and try to get the face right. I hope that you can see her face. She's very pretty. Um, she has very small eyes. So I just, just want to get that done so I can move on to the you know nicer things like the cape and her the back of her cape and her robe she has a lot of detail so wish me luck on the face and eyes it's gonna be fun fun oh we have received in a question from our um uh, viewers a question uh this is a twofold question mm. first how did you guys meet all of you <laughs> oh that's a good one i know cool. i think i met both of you through Dysylvania. Mm. Right? Yeah, I yeah. met yeah. you through Transylvania and I met Alexander, I think. In theory, it is through Transylvania because it's Yeah, because it's Ruralish. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's still, see, it's Transylvania, it's our connecting spot. Yeah. It's the people. link. <laughs> That's why we keep you in the middle. Yeah. So we mix. <laughs> we sandwich you. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it's because uh, I need to look left and right. <laughs> uh, also, another thing that I'm doing, uh, when I'm not sure about the consistency on the palette, I paint a bit on my finger, so I can see how the paint is uh, feeling. Oh, so that's what uh, it's with all the paint on the finger. On the finger, yeah. Yeah, I'm actually getting a feel uh, for the color. Personally, it helps me. I know people that are like, I oh, know if I don't do it on paper, I, I cannot tell the difference. I am people. Your people. <laughs> yeah, because it doesn't tell me anything, especially for the color, because then I get the diluted color on my skin tone, which is not the same as the one that is on the mini. So it's like, oof, it's a color. I don't know if it's good or not, so <laughs> fine. But, but you feel the moist. 
see the moist on the palette. <laughs> and the second part of our question is, for those of you who don't know, Diana and Alexander have started a partnership. Yay. How Yay. is it going? Uh, good. Yeah. I would say it's going very... I mean, I don't want to speak for anyone. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, never. No, no, no. No, no. Uh, no I think it, it came as a very natural collab. Um, we have very similar mindset which is very important in a collaboration more than the skills or the way that you approach things but it's like we usually find ourselves you know when we get asked a question or a proposal for a you know commission or something like that like how would you approach it and we realize we have kind of the same approach so it, i think it's a very natural collab um yeah you can say anything bad <laughs> <laughs> um yes about what she said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I fully agree. <laughs> we had uh, like discussions, especially at the very first days of collab, that you're like, okay, let's see how this person is thinking about a specific uh, thing. That one would write something and the other would be like, I had the exact, uh, the exact same idea, or uh, I, I fully agree, I don't have anything more to comment because this is exactly what I was uh, thinking of doing. Love That's the t-shirt so design, by the way. Hmm? Sorry? Love the t-shirt design. We thank you. Thank you. I mean, thank you. We thank you. We will take, uh, we'll show you how the back looks too. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's actually the first time I get t-shirts done with my logo or anything that is branded, so it's very exciting for me yeah. to see like something that started as a fun little thing to, you know, actually see something that has a branding that I contributed to. It's interesting. Also, we know that you're all, or even you're not amazing painters, but do you have the worst mini ever? Like in your opinion, that you have, uh, that you've ever painted it. <laughs> I've written, oh, okay, the worst is maybe uh, the uh, least impressive one in your perspective. I had uh, so there was this uh, um, uh, pumpkin, uh, uh, this gourd that um, uh, I was supposed to paint. I, I wanted to paint. I I love Halloween and its colors, and um, I wanted to paint it uh, Halloweenish. So. Uh, I painted it, and um, uh, I was I was getting better. I was uh, experiencing some progress, but after I have done, I think all of, almost all of it, I realized why I had such a difficult time doing it. It wasn't primed. Oh. oh. Okay. And that was uh, during the time that I was uh, trying to stop redoing. Uh, miniatures. Uh, Redoing? Yes. Uh, I had a few that I've just stripped the paint and priming completely oh. and redone it. Okay, that's that's hardcore. I've never done that. No, not, not stripped. Uh, what did you took the paint off with? Uh, it's something alcohol based. Some um, it, It's a creamy liquid mm -hmm, uh, okay. I purchased um, from a local store. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, yeah. I also did this to a sword. I think I've redone a sword like four times. It took me five hours in total. Like mini sword or uh, a sword of a mini, okay. and it was attached. Mm -hmm. And I stripped the paint only from the sword and redone the priming only on the sword, and then repainting it. Uh, I think I've stripped it twice. That's brutal. And uh, totally redone it four times, and I realized it looked better the first time. Mm -hmm. So then I decided to stop doing that. Yikes. Yeah. That's, that's harsh. Um, what about you? <laughs> it's not the worst mini, but like the same level of frustration. Because it's not a it's not a bad project, so to say. It's like it's I'm quite proud of her actually. It's the um, oh, I think I have photos. It's one of my last bigger projects. The the um she, she's she's called Isabel the matriarch and she is supposed to be like this vampire uh, lady um, you know the, probably the matriarch of the 
of the den or something like that. Uh, and I decided her to be... Um, she has all these crown details and gold and filigree and stuff like that on her. And I wanted her to, to be very... I don't know... Saint-like in the way that she is painted. And I repainted the skin... I think like five times because it was either too brown or too yellow or too purple or too whatever and at some point I was that you know what, just the, fuck it, this is it, I am not going to be redoing her again. And it was a good decision because the skin was actually the, the flattest part of her. Um, everything else was just detail on detail on detail and um, I'm so happy to see her done. Like so happy. Um, so yeah, not not the worst mini, but I'm happy to, <laughs> to see the back of her. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that is done. <laughs> yeah, it was, I mean, and it was good because then I started, you know, I kind of, it was, in a way it was good because I built the patience to work a lot on small details. So, you know, I think it was one of those, oh, now it's a learning situation. <laughs> Which can be frustrating. Which can be so frustrating. So I'm trying it's to paint uh, the eyes. I hope that we can actually... It can also be frustrating. To paint the eyes? Yeah. yeah. Um, so my method for painting eyes is doing the kind of the dark outline with a black or something like that. Uh, and then in the middle of this, I'm going to be adding a line of ivory white for the white of the eyes and then like a dot of whatever for the other color for the iris. I think I'm gonna make her blue eyed. And what about your Alexander besides the yes. paladin? <laughs> we, we do not put that here. He was, was five. five years old or something. <laughs> I say this uh, scow scowling myself. Can anything painted at five years old it looks amazing. Yeah. <sighs> so it was actually um, Instagram painting challenge that you had to roll uh, two d6s oh, man. and uh, you would uh, fall on a different side of the um, color circle okay. and I ended up having a blue violet with uh, blue green that you could use only two colors and I had two very similar colors and also black and white I managed to paint something that it looks it looks decently painted but it's like I had only these colors uh, available and uh, that's it and I think it's also on Instagram it's uh, like a blue skinned elf with a long bow mm -hmm. and okay. uh, I mean if you look at it it's like okay it's not Good. painted bad but the colors are just like you needed sometimes you just need a bit more color in your life yeah i find it difficult as well uh, just taking to a few colors and um, i have a tendency to add many especially to the details and um, i'm not sure how much they would affect um, uh, the overall view mm. but I, I, I quite struggle with uh, color theory, to be honest. Mm, you know what I, what I tend to do when I realize I have a lot of, of colors? Because there are some models in which, you know, they have a lot of detail yeah. and a lot of, you know, textures and clothes and hair and armor and all the things. Uh, and you, you kind of need to add more colors. What I do is I find... Um, the color that I'm using to shade and the color that I'm using to highlight is the same. So for example, here I'm using pale sand, which is an ivory bone, ivory color. Um, and this is the color that I'm going to be using to highlight all the other colors, including blues, reds, yellows, whatever colors, I'm going to be using this. And maybe let's say I decide that I'm going to be using this evil red or a dark purple which is cool, it's a really nice color, um, or a really dark purple, and I'm going to be using that purple almost to black to shade every other color, right? So you have these two, uh, even if the base color, like blue, red, and yellow, green, whatever, they're different, the highlights and the shadows are kind of tying these colors 
all together, so you don't have a mishmash of colors. I'm not sure. It, if does it make sense? Yeah, I'm I not mean, sure if uh, the technical term is hue or a tint. I, I think, think it's, it's hue. <laughs> <laughs> um, hue is uh, when it varies on a on a gradient scale, and tint the same is, color. Is not the same. Okay, so yeah, it would be the same color but different. Tint. Tint? Yeah. Tint. 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 I don't know. We'll look it up and we'll nonsense. Google it. We know how to paint. <laughs> Tint, it's, it's nonsense in Romania, so I think it's rather, yeah, it's rather thin rather than Hue. Hue is a variation. Hue. 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 But we promise you, we know how to paint. We don't know exactly the terms. Also, talking about terms, what's glazing? You oh, brought yeah, it up. We talked about ah, yeah. It. yeah. At the beginning of the episode, and I'm not as far with my minute to actually show it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think maybe Alexander is. Yeah, um, we could explain it. I mean, yeah, I think it's better to explain it because the the red that I'm using now it starts to to show on uh, that more red, and you can see some of the evil red underneath. Let's see if we can get even closer, <laughs> like on the pants or the hat. Mm -hmm. okay. So, uh, glazing is uh, where you have the color on the mini and you want to bring it uh, to something else, to a different color. Okay. So, you dilute the paint in your palette to a very diluted form. So, I cannot use it as an example yeah. because I need something very flat to make just example because on the mini it's even more complicated but you start wait so you start with a red and then you start to add yellow and you push it in a way that makes a gradient from red to yellow okay now it's very watered down because it's running mm. but in theory you can go from red to yellow so and go through all the stages between the two with the uh, glazing. Oh, okay. So it is uh, keeping it very diluted and uh, smoothing and a lot of uh, layers of paint. Mm -hmm. It takes time and uh, it is, personally for me, it's a little bit hard to master. That's why I'm using something between highlighting and glazing because I'm still not so comfortable with just glazing. Yeah, there are some techniques that need a lot of training and exercise to get right. Glazing is one of them. Um, and I think, personally, I think that's one of the most complex even for myself, because you need to have very good brush control, know your model, um, know the paint, know the, the paint, paint know needs how to they be behave. Exact. So it's very, from that point of view, it's very, very hard to, to master. Sorry, I touched you. Oh, <laughs> you weren't doing that, eyes, right? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't have been the difference if they were just as crooked. <laughs> <laughs> or, or it would have been like, the that's eyes. such a good eye, can you bump me again? <laughs> can you bump me again? <laughs> oh, yeah. Please bump. Please bump, yes, I'm doing eyes. Bump me. Uh, I need a brown. Uh, Ah, also, if you ever paint uh, by Diana, next to Diana, and you have a beard, make sure you... Uh, Man, you that is not <laughs> the case. No, <laughs> to just park that. your brush on the beard and uh, she <laughs> she gets annoyed. <laughs> it's, I don't know, it's, it's the thing. I don't it's know. wrong. It's works. wrong, you're not supposed to do that. It's like, no. <laughs> That's not where the brush goes. They're not where the brush goes. Uh, right, so I... So, Look, you know how I was saying about the, um, the no, 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 I need a, uh, oh, the, need a, a specific the... brown, but this is a good teaching example. So, I have a brown that is very uh, orangey red, but I want to bring this purple that I used on the red on this brown, right? Uh, and I want to do this uh, so I can cover the, um, the armor, which I'm then going to be adding a bit of, of gold. Uh, so I'm gonna mix the brown and the purple just so I have kind of the same color and I don't have a full rainbow of colors on my mini. Okay. I'll show you. I'll show you. 
So now I'm just gonna outline all the areas that I want to have with gold um, later on. Also, mm -hmm. we talked about not necessarily worst miniatures you've ever done. What are your best minis? The ones that make you feel the most accomplished when you look at them. I think for me it would be Fetitza. <laughs> it's uh Fetitza is Laron Kubru. What is Fetitza? Uh Fetitza is um greater demon from uh, oh. a game. Uh, she has uh, four arms. Uh, See, horns. She, he says it's endearing, it's like Fetitza, but Fetita. then like four arms. Yeah, <laughs> two of them uh, and uh, in pincers. The thing is, I painted this model in 2018, and to every competition I've been to uh, in Romania, I have won uh, a gold medal. She's gorgeous. Fetitza is gorgeous. It's like she's beautiful. It's from D and D or Warhammer. It's from a uh, model from Warhammer. Slanesh, maybe. Yes. Oh, I think I know what you mean. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, thanks to Diana, we actually have some good photos of uh, Fetitza because when she saw the, po my, the my photos on Instagram, and then uh, she saw Fetitza up close, they're uh, not doing them justice. <laughs> No, it a, a bit more colorful thing. comment than that. Uh, <laughs> that looks like, well, you can imagine. What did you say, Diana? Tell us. Tell um, us. It, it, does it, it... See, you make me say... Wait, is it PG-13? No, 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 it's, it's okay. Well, it's so if, it, if it's PG-13 and it's someone under 13 here, please cover, cover your, your ears. Say, say, yeah. say, say, Diana. It looked like shit, man. It looked like shit, <laughs> like it was... And I'm keeping it very nicely. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> Um, the photos look like shit, not Fetitza. The photo, no, Fetitza <laughs> is gorgeous, uh, but the photos made it look like it was an average mini, which it's not. So he's like, what the hell? You need better pictures. Um, and yeah, it's, it, it's better now that it has better pictures. Can I have the blue? Ah, the dark sea blue. I need dark the dark sea, sea blue. This one. There yes, you thank go. you. I know, I know we had it here. Uh -huh. Um, you, Diana, mm? what's the mini that makes you the most accomplished or that you love the most? Uh, honestly, it's one of it's a mini that I've done for a comp for a commission, and it's actually the mini that I painted for Ruxi for Ayala that we had in Wilby's Wishing Well. Oh. Um, I feel like that model, the, first of all, the miniature itself, it's beautiful. She, uh, she it's, uh, it's an elven archer and she's like, the, her poses when she is firing her arrows. And she's so graceful and so beautiful and I'm so happy I managed to kind of get the vibe of the mini and all the details of, of, of the miniature, because um, she's quite detailed also. So I think that's one of the ones that, even though it's not the most beautiful, it's the one that I'm most proud of. So, yeah. Lucy and also and love it. Loves it. I, I hope so. I hope so. It's like, I, I, I honestly wasn't, you know, when I was working on her, I wasn't that, um, um, I don't know. Like, I knew it was a good miniature, because while you paint it, you kind of know if it's going to be a good one, or it's like, mm -hmm. it's good, but, you know, could be better. Um, and it started out as, you know, one of those minis where I thought that it's going to be nice. But the more that I worked on her, I felt like, no, man, this is actually going to be a really nice one. <laughs> and yeah, I think that's that's the one that, that I'm most proud of. Um, so yeah. I don't, I don't, I, I have photos of her though. That's the only thing that I have remaining. <laughs> um, she's in her happy home. You're nuts. What would be your uh, most favorite? So, I've only had on, only one uh, mini that I've uh, received praise for, praise for, and it wasn't even painted. <laughs> <laughs> what do you okay. mean? What, what do you mean? Yeah. Uh, most of it was just uh, priming color. Okay. And uh, I I had to do it uh, very quickly, and um, I, you can see it. It's um. It's the mini for uh, blue for the guest uh, Justine that we've had. Um, 
personally, I'm so uh, disappointed that I could not get it to look better and I didn't have more time. And um, Justine also loves it. Yeah, yeah I know. I, I, I really appreciate it um, that uh, it received the love. But uh, it wasn't even painted. I mean, it's mo it was mostly dry brushed over, uh, over prime. It, it was supposed to be black and uh, gold, black and yellow. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have yellow. <laughs> black and yellow, black and yellow. <laughs> anyway, uh, but that's that was not uh, the most. Uh, that's not the one that uh, makes me feel the best. I think the first one is. Yeah, which my, one? My first what? mini. The, the druid. The the, oh. the druid. Yeah, the Aww. forty-five hour druid. <laughs> I'm really curious to see that right now. Uh, yeah, I have to um, remove the dust from it. By, uh, ah, that's another. <laughs> actually, that's another point. What do you do with all the minis that you've painted? But give them to Dysylvania. They, will <laughs> <laughs> they always need minis. Yeah. <laughs> I plan to purchase um, a showing case. A showcase. Oh. What's it called? Oh. Showcase. Yeah, showcase. Yeah, showcase. Okay. Yeah. So um, well, first it keeps the dust out and then I can uh, see them better and decide better what to paint next. Oh, nice. Not in Bucharest. Not, not, not in Bucharest what? Uh, it, it doesn't keep the dust out. Uh. Um, I have an air purifier and it does wonders. Ah, okay. Oh. Yeah. I have three cats and a dog. It won't do shit. <laughs> <laughs> it will clog <laughs> and it will die. Um, yeah, I, I have two cats as well, and um, I know I know the pain, but... Uh, <laughs> Drugs. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, with, with the small hair, I can deal with it. But the small dust, it's killing me. Hey, I mean... I don't think you can actually. There are some... I heard about some cases that... Uh, like big cabinets that you can get they're insanely expensive uh, that are airtight and like with l l LED lights to light up the minis and stuff like that but they're mm. like too expensive. I'll just use a brush. I'll just use a brush. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, dust, I'll dust the brush. Uh, I'll uh, brush the dust off. Brush the dust. Um, um, but, uh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, okay, uh, so uh, I just want to say that um, uh, recently I've learned of um, varnish and I will start applying it and that should help. Oh, you didn't varnish your, your, your no. minis? <laughs> okay, okay. No, because it's easier to strip the paint afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a low blow. That was a low blow. No, the thing is that a lot of times I wouldn't varnish a model because uh, later on I would go back to it and do some changes. Do you do re redo yep. your minis often? Often no. Like, but okay, it's, not often? Never. it's not never. It's not never. I also plan it, but it doesn't happen. Mm. Wait, plan to what? To go back to them. Oh. Uh, there are some uh, really old metal models that I have that I've. Oh, yeah, I know them. <coughs> oh, no. <laughs> you're like, oh, yeah, you're that old. <laughs> <laughs> but they still make them um, metal models. Yeah. Today. Yeah, yeah, they still do. Yeah? Yeah. It's uh, rare. Mm -hmm. And for uh, miniatures for DN used for D&D, it's even more rare now. We have some metal. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's uh, very destructive for... Uh, they don't get along with the, the other minis if you put them in the same <laughs> If you put them case, in the same box they, and... They break. <laughs> The plastic ones. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We have some dragonborns that were purchased before a fight when we realized we needed a fight, uh, yeah, and uh, we didn't have any yeah. enough dragonborns. But they were metallic dragonborns, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. metallic dragonborns made, <laughs> made of metal. Of metal. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And they That's were the listening to Metallica as yeah. well. <laughs> I had at home uh, lead minis. Oh. From yeah. oh, way back when. Yeah. Man, those are old. Those old, heavy, and I'm happy that we threw them away. <gasps> Why? Why? Lead poisoning. But you don't get poisoning by <laughs> having them Plus, around. they were broken and... Uh, uh. They were uh, military ones. Mm. Like, of course. Right. Yeah, because the whole uh, miniature painting hobby started first with... Uh, you know, like Warcraft. aircraft uh, and uh, vehicles, then also for the strategy war games, 
and then it was also the booming with Warhammer and uh, D&D. Plus they didn't look that good. Not the lead ones, I mean. No, so well, you can't really add a lot of details on the Yeah, but they didn't have any texture, they were like flat. Mm. And uh, it didn't look that good. Mm. Also, have you ever experienced a funny moment while painting? I don't know, like a moment when you started laughing for no reason, almost? Oh. Um, well, and why? Because that's. <laughs> Why I can't tell you, but to the adult uh, stream of Pennsylvania, <laughs> <laughs> I heard they uh, and I was like, "What?" <laughs> it's not that. It's uh, just that um, usually I'm very focused and not just on the mini. I just my mind wanders off when I paint, and that's one of the things I love about it. And um, uh, yeah, I guess being with the mind who knows where I would laugh sometimes but I can't <laughs> tell you why because it's not something that I actively remember plus I was told I remember um, too many details and was asked not to so I'm struggling not to <laughs> okay is it because you remember all Drox's jokes <laughs> puns all the puns all the puns sorry yeah. oh sorry. no I, I really don't um, uh, get Be jokes. very careful how you answer this one. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't get jokes, and she. I'm very fortunate that she accepted the fact that <laughs> <laughs> she has to explain most of her jokes to me. <laughs> <laughs> well. Maybe this is why she's so good at it yeah. because she has to, you know, keep up explain the game to, yeah. uh, to, <laughs> to, to impress your notes. She's yeah. like made them crisp and refined, so they are very punchy and, and quick. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you're the first audience to get her jokes. Yeah. <laughs> so you just make her better. Yeah. No, it's okay. If your nose gets it, it's an amazing <laughs> line. <laughs> it's the best joke ever. I'll tell her that. <laughs> <laughs> she will see it on the on the stream when this will air. <laughs> I'll go hide. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go feed the cats with you. Yeah. <laughs> No, the cats like her more. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like because she tells like jokes, I mean. Uh, the Come cats on. have a sense of humor. <laughs> That's how you know cats are good. They're good yeah. cats if they laugh at your jokes. <laughs> so, is uh, your character from a Sarah's Sildry in the Leonin inspired by this context in any way? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. It just came naturally. Huh. <laughs> so okay. maybe in the subconscious, I don't know. Maybe it was there somewhere. There is some similarity now that you mentioned. <laughs> 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 keep digging, keep, from keep land. asking questions. Yeah. So you are gonna learn some stuff. Self therapy. <laughs> therapy for D and D. From miniature painting. From miniature painting. You can yeah. tell me whatever you want. This activity is very soothing. Oh yes. <laughs> very soothing. I know for me. One, it's once stressful. you're done with the eyes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Or leave them at the end. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question. What What if you have a miniature with thousands of eyes? Let's say a beholder. What would you do then? Cry. Simplify it. You make it uh, either they have very big eyes. Beholders usually do, or. Uh, or that's what I would do. Um, <laughs> or uh, just uh, make them uh, simple. For example, in your workshop, I, I was looking forward to the eyes. But uh, I was kind of grateful that um, since there were a lot of beginners, you decided to uh, not torture us <laughs> or uh, not to let us torture ourselves more. Uh, I think that's. The correct, that's cor way. the correct yeah. way to say it, yeah. Well, the word, the mini that we have on the workshop uh, was not that good in terms of eyes, because so it was a, a, an orc shaman and he had a hood over his eyes, and so you couldn't really tell them apart. Like it was a bit um, harder to yeah, to, to detail them. Just anyway. covering the side of the eyes as well, because what we have been. 
Uh, what we also taught at the workshop is sometimes for the eyes, you go from the side to to go with a yeah, with a like, brush, like right. this, for example. So you wouldn't okay. stab your your mini with the brush, but you would rather go and have a small line. Yeah. That is easier to to handle. And uh, in that mini, we actually couldn't because the hood was covering the sides of the eyes. So we really had to go a bit on the get at a 45 degree angle mm. like uh, and uh, usually what i like to do for spellcasters that are especially holding like a flame a, a lightning bolt or something like that i like to match the energy of the spell effect mm. to the eyes like he's channeling the energy mm. uh, through them so for uh, the workshop for the shaman we went for a uh, orange yellow flame and for uh, the shaman's eyes we did uh, orange and yellow dots oh so yeah there are ways to kind of counter Cheat a system. mini with many eyes or you know, while well, I was talking, I was remember. You know, Mike Wazowski from Toy Story. Yeah. I mean, not Toy Story. From the, Monsters, the Monsters Inc. Monsters, Monsters Inc. Oh. Uh, like, the big one, blue one. Yeah, the no, the, no, big, the green big one. Eye. The big the eye. eye. Oh, okay, the big the big there, eye. that's an that's an easy eye to paint. I feel like that's the easiest one <laughs> to paint. <laughs> Is there a mini in the um, a monster in the India? I wonder that has one mm. big eye. Uh, nothing. No is that's thick. a name? Yeah. No thick. No, that's a name of a monster? Uh, I will uh, ignore this side of the table. <laughs> from, uh, <laughs> I, I will ignore uh, the lair questions. I will allow Carla and Ors uh, to pose the questions. <laughs> the, the audience. The, the audience. <laughs> yeah, we'll the eat their voices. <laughs> well, hello, sir. I'm new. <laughs> I have a question. Yes, please. Um, do you drink that pink soda you have on the table? <laughs> <laughs> this looks tasty. <laughs> Unfortunately. Why does everyone have pink? I have green. You have the... Swamp. Is this the healthy version? Yeah, <laughs> this is the one with kiwi and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The Brussels sprouts. <laughs> the, also known as the swamp. Swamp. Because we started with red Got and you it. went directly for uh, the skin and now you went yes. on blues and evil reds. Yes, yes. Explain me the color of composition in my water, please. Yeah. I would watch that. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> and now uh, it's my time to do skin. Oh, oh. No. let us know. What do you use for? I'm gonna use a, a skin tone, a light skin tone directly, not to complicate my life and uh, do color combos. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> or with the three colors. Yeah. Yeah, I think that the challenge for many people um, in the workshop was that we only used three colors. Uh, and that was kind of by choice uh, because we wanted people to learn how to mix their colors. Um, because it's really easy to go and buy your own paints from the from the shop, but then you just end up kind of mishmashing a ton of colors in your mini, and it don't make sense. So, yeah, how did you find that, by the way? The fact that we only had three colors. I and loved it. Yeah. Uh, I know that some uh, of the participants didn't get it. Mm -hmm. I tried to explain to a few that. Um, you're actually trying to use um, uh, quality materials, and um, uh, it's the it's the best way to do it. Um, it's it felt a bit too advanced for uh, some, and I totally get that. Mm. Uh, but in the end, it does you a whole lot better. Um, I've had uh, <coughs> trouble trying to use uh, an already uh, bot mix um, or to try to recreate it or uh, because it, even though it's a uh, uh, orange for example uh, you're not always finding there uh, just uh, red and yellow mm. and uh, it, the composition of colors can be quite tricky 
to figure out or to recreate um, the purchase colors are great uh, especially the blues the varieties and the purples i think are the mm. from my perspective it's really hard to mix good purples because you need that magenta pigment that is not easy to find and red green pen. So I have some uh, low quality paints and I have uh, some amazing colors on it mm -hmm. and it was like a, a rose color I can't remember the exact name and here I've recreated it by mistake mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. I just loved it <laughs> <laughs> and it helps you a lot in the long run to be able to do that to mix your colors yes mm -hmm. leading from that uh, what would be your tip for new beginners like should they invest more on the paints, on the brushes, or should they start with a minimum of, I don't know, a thousand bucks to buy everything? A thousand bucks can get you a thousand, wait, a thousand lei bucks? No, I, well, I've broke my own mind. Let's say a thousand lei. Because... <laughs> <laughs> a thousand lei, I think it's a really good number to get your setup started. Like... You start from a really good, really good point. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, if I were a beginner and I didn't have that much money and I wanted to start this hobby, in what should I put my money in? In the paints, in the brushes? You can get some uh, good quality brushes for like 15 to 20 lay. And you can get two, three uh, sizes. So, you need to have something slightly larger to cover uh, larger areas and uh, something more detailed for the finer details afterwards you usually some uh, painting companies have like a basic uh, painting set mm -hmm. so this is a really good starting point because usually you have your primary colors you have your black and white you have a couple of uh, metallic colors mm -hmm. and if I remember well, you also have some skin tones. Yeah, I think the set that I got, which are we allowed to say names of brands? Uh, I mean, say, yeah, we're, not, we're not making commercial, like yeah. what you got for it from your experience mm -hmm. and so on. This is not by any means a commercial. Today. Yeah, it's not. Mm -hmm. And I got it simply because I thought that I was doing a bit of market research and I think that was the best quality for the money that you were paying uh, and it was the old set of model colors by Vallejo um, and I think you get 12 colors yeah. and in 12 colors yeah you get all the you know the basics some metallics uh, and the blue some blues some purple stuff like that and that set I still use today like I didn't finish the paints in that set I expanded on, on the set uh, and it's almost two years now, so it's a really good quality. And then the next is brushes, lights. Oh yeah, the lights. lights. Uh, this type of setup has helped me in the majority of my mm -hmm. painting in, uh, in an apartment. And uh, one is enough. If you want to go deeper, to it, you can do two lights yeah, so like this. Have them from and, two directions. Yeah, and these are very good uh, press for quality and very, very, very important. No matter what light uh, lamp yeah, you get, the bulb should be uh, the cold light, the white light. Why? White. White, white uh, daylight. <laughs> yeah, daylight. No, 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 why? Uh, why? Uh, in order to uh, uh, see the colors as they are. Because otherwise, with a yellow bulb, it, you see them more yellow and also it is tiring the eye a lot more this is this is good <laughs> this is good this is my wife um, and also I think a good practice for beginners is to look at their mini in um, kind of different light settings like for example we're painting now you know we're in a studio we have studio lights we have this lights uh, but once we uh, you know you take your mini outside in the daylight uh, which is the truest color rendering that one could get um, you're gonna notice that your colors are gonna look different 
so you know just from time to time take a break take your mini outside look at it uh, see if the colors are the ones that you're picturing in your mind um, and then continue um, very important to know that outside color is a neutral one if you're looking for a bulb this is some technicalities if you're looking for a white bulb you should look for anything uh, anything above 350 Kelvin usually if you want a very crisp is uh, 500 Kelvin uh, this is the I think the the most coldest stone if you want something warm and definitely not for a miniature painting you should look look for something under uh, uh, 350 Kelvin mm -hmm. yeah because when you're when you're getting a, a lamp and you know you want to get some bulbs from it you're gonna get lost in um, Kelvin Kelvins yeah Kelvins. Kelvin's lumens and it, it's something else that is gonna it appears sometimes they don't even label a kelvin or lumens it's just uh it's just a temperature color which is easier but then you find out that the neutral is too warm or too cold yeah 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 exactly something like that yeah um for as as an example for the workshop that we had the bulbs were uh six thousand 500 something yeah, like that Kelvin I think so. um, and the lumens were around a hundred or something like that it very much depends on like if you're gonna have a hundred lumens here it's gonna be bright as so you're not gonna be able to see anything I'm trying man I'm trying not to curse but the very, very important for the for, for the folks at home lumens is the intensity is the uh, the unit that you measure intensity in color in uh, no, 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 light sorry and then um kelvin is the oh. hue oh. this is the correct emotion mm -hmm. that your light will have and then your colors for the miniature that you put inside that light mm -hmm. yep exactly a question that we i think we've asked and at the christmas painting workshop mm -hmm. um how is the paintings in romania the first one and second if you had the let's say influence how would you change it and what would you do? What would be the... So, first question is, how is the painting... How is the painting seen in Romania? For the miniature of this scale, not so many people. I've seen uh, there are some clubs that they are painting uh, armies like Warhammer. But, of course, everything I'm mentioning now it is comparing to Greece, where yeah, I grew up, and uh, the Western Europe. So, if I say it's smaller, I'm comparing it to yeah, some yeah. really big, uh, large scenes. That's the of, idea. Uh, to compare yeah, it. so compared to this, uh, Romania is uh, now really developing, and more and more people are, uh, are interested. Mm -hmm. Like with the painting workshop, we were really surprised with the amount of people that uh, showed interest. And new people. New people, yes, because we've had the painting workshop in the past and uh, it wasn't the same. Mm -hmm. At the paint along, at the D&D day, uh, we also had quite a few people. If you remember, at some point, we both... We didn't have yeah, time. Yeah, we didn't have, have a spot right. to sit because we gave our, our spot to someone that was like, Hey, I want to paint. Uh, where can I paint? Uh, how much it costs? <coughs> so... Yeah. The painting scene in Romania is uh, growing. There are also uh, clubs that are doing more uh, uh, modelism, modelism, which has to do with vehicles and uh, sceneries, scenes. yes, dioramas, and more on the historical side, not on the fantasy side. Like last year at the National uh, Romanian Competition at the museum, it was uh, the fantasy category were like 15 entries <coughs> and some were from uh, the same people so definitely it is uh, it is growing that's awesome that's a good yeah. thing for the community and i think there was a second scale yeah. of the question um, what we would do to influence it yeah. or oh, what would you do to influence it or if you had the influence how would you push more people to come and mm -hmm. paint I think uh, our first painting workshop was the first step mm -hmm. and uh, 
The painting competition we did for D&D Day was uh, also very well uh, received. We had more than 10 entries, if I remember mm -hmm. well, which we were hoping for at least four. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was it was unexpected how many people and how many people that we didn't know like showed up with minis to 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 bring in the competition, which was really nice because you know we were kind of hoping to have uh, the people that we know that they're painting at home, but then we had some unexpected entries. One of them even sent their their entries uh, through courier. Uh, from 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 Cluj, I think. Okay. So, because they wanted to participate, so that was really nice. Um, so we're we're growing slowly. Were there any entries from outside of Romania? Not yet. Oh. We're going. We're getting there. Okay. Give us give us some time. We'll get there. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, that's the the really cool thing is that. Because we have a social uh, media presence, uh, we kind of know uh, others, uh, you know, other painters uh, in the area, like uh, other painters in Romania. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really interesting that this time we really saw newcomers mm -hmm. and also that they told us they've been following us for some time. Yes, that's the yeah, that, that, that was the. <laughs> Even, even at Comic Con, I think someone said, "Ah, oh, your reputation precedes you." <laughs> and uh, yes, when you approach me, please stop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think when he, I just said, oh, "I'm wrong for initiative to he was like, oh. "You know, he, he had the gas, and I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> we're famous. Yeah, we're famous. Um. But yeah, it was really really interesting uh, to see that and it's very encouraging and it also motivates us to do more mm. types of events like okay we have the beginners workshop let's have a more advanced or hey same workshop but more people and have uh, key reviews from people that attended <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, how yeah. did they like it and painting competitions because this is also motivating some uh, people i know when i started uh, getting back into the scene of uh, painting the competitions were actually really motivating me and pushing the boundaries of uh, techniques that's how i learned wet blending really for a competition yeah okay. it was an online competition and it is an angel and the wings are like on fire mm, i think that's also think nice it. yeah it's also nice again. Nice, really nice. So yeah, I think our our next goal for now is just to pull people outside from their homes and just okay, you're painting alone at home. Let's get together and paint because it's fun when you paint and there's people and you're not alone with your thoughts and you laugh at your wife's jokes <laughs> that you say in your mind. Um, but then I look at my mini and then I look at yours. Yeah. Well, we weren't kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I had the same uh, whiplash when we've painted for Christmas. Although I finished, I was like, I'm not okay. <laughs> <laughs> it couldn't be better, but it's okay. <laughs> wow, you paint so fast. <laughs> um, this is the Anna on, uh, on the slow mode. <laughs> no, this is actually, I mean, no, this is the Anna on fast mode actually. Ah. Normally, normally I would spend a lot more time on her robes, on, on highlighting the robes in different colors. Have, um, sorry, have yeah? we said if that uh, mini is for a campaign or if it's just eh? All of them are for um, a one shot with a surprise. surprise, 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 surprise yeah. Yeah. One shot. It can be anyone. anyone. It can be anyone. anyone. We don't even anyone. know anyone. Wow. This pink cup. <laughs> oh, we are here. <laughs> well, if we are talking in D&D terms, it's not a creature. Yes, it's an object. object. Yeah, a non-magical object. What's the difference? I mean, uh, how oh, yeah, yeah, never mind. I answered yeah. answer uh, that question. Unless, unless it's a mimic. Then it's a creature. Yeah. Ah, okay. A creature object. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. A crop object. <laughs> crop object. Well, mm. I'm definitely not gonna finish mine now. Oh, mm. me neither. And uh, I think we can, we can take a picture of your minis. <laughs> oh, yeah, now. 
Yeah, but and I definitely want to finish. I like where I'm going. Yeah. With, with Diana stays with here after we turn off all the lights with one <laughs> light over her. Yeah, yeah. in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> we come back next week. Hey, Diana is here. Yeah, still me, here. Still here. <laughs> I still got things to do. Mini crackers. So just we have that. so many unpainted minis here. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Hey, you wouldn't could, believe. We could make this a series once every, I don't know how much time we just get together, just go through the pile of shame. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's yes. an excellent idea. Yeah. Please, if you like this idea, comment, like, anything. Tell anything. us, do it. <laughs> do we it want now. more of them. <laughs> we need do your help it. to convince um, also Alexander to do it. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's a bit scheduled. Go to Roll for Initiative folks on Instagram and say, <laughs> do, do it. it. Do, do it. it. Do it. Pester him. Execute all that 66. Yeah. Do it. We can go on for a lot of time. Yeah. Uh, well, how much on average do, does it take you to finish a, a mini? If you go on a full speed mode and it looks decent. <laughs> more and more uh, conditions. If, I don't know. Let's say about six, six hours. Six. About four or six hours. Mm -hmm. Not a lot. I mean, it depends. It, it depends a lot on the on how on the mini. I want to yeah. finish the mini. Like for this one, uh, how long have we done? This is like two hours. Um, so yeah. I think we're we're about to kind of wrap up for for now. Yeah. Um, but I'm gonna spend more time on this. Yeah, <laughs> Diana with the almost fully painted mini. <laughs> <laughs> you know so, what, guys? We can take a quick break and then come with an outro for yeah. everyone, yes. so you can say our goodbyes properly. Yep. Let's do that. Let's do that. So, who's excited for break? Yeah! 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 Stretching. Many trees. I can hit that. The ball of the mouth is more of a boy. Nom 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 So uh, we're back after a, a very short uh, stretching. <laughs> yeah, our backs are good. <laughs> and um, well, I've really had fun today. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Me too. Yes. I know I didn't have a lot of progress, but um, that uh, takes time. So um, it's better uh, to take your time and do yeah. things in your own pace. Don't try to, you know, rush things. It, it's not gonna be good. Unless you really have to rush. It. I mean, yeah, if you have a deadline, <laughs> fine, yes. It, what I really like to say is go with the flow. Yes. If the flow goes fast, go with it. If yeah. not, yeah, it's a it hobby. Yeah. It's not it's not it's not a job. It's not a job. Exactly. So like you have no deadlines, you have no nothing. So just do whatever it feels good. Just remember to do it from time to time. <clears throat> Your notes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, are we gonna say goodbye? For yes. Now? 
Um, guys, and... but don't forget to point out the beautiful minis that you have yeah, in front of you guys for a while. Yeah, right in front. Yeah, all right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, 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 yeah. There, 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 okay. There, there. <laughs> there exactly there. <laughs> and um, yeah, maybe later, since the one shot uh, is not due for some time, um, maybe there will be some teasers on the Instagram. On, Rolling Hills Craft? Yeah, on Rolling Hills Craft, I plan to finish this lady that you can see there. Um, I hope to do something really cool with her. Let's see how that looks. Um, so it's Rolling Hills Craft uh, on Instagram and on Facebook. And for the rest? For the rest, <laughs> you can see this lovely lady and maybe more. And nobody, maybe more. Nobody more. knows. Oh my God. Nobody knows. Surprise. Uh, on uh, Roll for Initiative uh, folks on Instagram and Facebook. Mm -hmm. And you can find us both on uh, rollinghillscraft.com. Yeah. Oh, that's super, super cool. Um, so, uh, basically what you're telling us and what's exciting is that we do have some time until the one shot. So mm -hmm. we're going to mm -hmm. continue the process on social media so oh, people wow. can, yeah. can see. Yeah. Like posting progress. Yeah, yeah, man, that's so cool. Yeah, we're okay. gonna try to keep everyone updated with mm. how how we move on with these with these minis. I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's where the, the folks can find you. Like it's it's uh, also important. On Dysylvania. On Dysylvania. It's on, also uh, yeah on Instagram on uh, Facebook. Um, Tik TikTok is this what the youngsters are using? <laughs> Discord, <laughs> Twitch, and and further on. But I don't think yeah. we're gonna post post no. it. Yeah. Updates will be I think only on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, mm -hmm. but also it's very important for the viewers out there who are seeing this this episode and think, oh my God, I'm not skilled enough, I'm not good enough for miniature mm. painting. It's important so you see uh, the journey from the start and you see that it's possible. Yunus is doing like a wonderful job. Yeah. He just started doing this and it, uh, it's impressive like honestly I have doubts painting myself <laughs> um, so yeah you show that it's graspable and it's doable yeah definitely um, and uh, I think I would add just one more thing um, regarding what to better invest I would say time time would be the most valuable thing that you can invest in mini painting um, other than that you can just make do with whatever you know. Yeah. And yeah, sure, the more the better. Just try stopping me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's all, folks. That's all. That's all, folks. Thank you. Uh, yeah, bye bye. We have a saying before. Mm. We have oh, a wow. saying before we leave. Uh, it was a good day, a good, good night. night, and, and a good, 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 good,